Irish Tennessee Homestead. How in the heck are you today? And today we're going to cover, uh, I was just putting together a pasture mix. And I thought, I thought I'd start going down this. I've had a couple of uh, comments come in on uh, pasture mixes, things of this nature. The emphasis on pasture mixes. You see a lot of people go out there and they plant a couple uh, joints of grass and some clover and, and so forth. Then scratch your heads of how some of these guys just, their cattle just put on weight like crazy and they're going, how is this happening? These things are at 500 pounds about the time they're weaned. You know, how is this happening? It's all in your pasture mix. You have to understand that cattle are, are herding herbivores. They roamed and ate wherever. And they had a wide mix of plants available to them. If you look at a natural prairie, you have all sorts of plants out there. And it's a lot of fun because you can play with this mix. See what does well in your area, what doesn't do well in your area. And watch your cattle. Monitor their weights. See what mix is working the best for your particular place. Okay, takes a little research, but once you come up with that mix, you'll be putting, you'll be turning out some of the finest looking cattle in your county just by what you do. Now you're gonna take a little ribbon. Uh, I can't tell you the number of times I've been asked, uh, what kind of weeds are you out there planting this year? And you do, you play with it. You know, you add a little something, you take a little something away, see how it goes. But we're gonna to try to start you out start to finish. If you're going into a pasture that's either been row cropped, bunch of weeds, whatever, or a pasture that has become overgrown, so forth, and the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do on this is go ahead and bush hog the thing down tight and you may wanna do a, a light disking. And I'm, I'm saying keep the disking to a minimum okay keep it to a minimum you don't want to do anything more than just to rough up and get a little surface dirt up there for you because a lot of what you're going to be doing is broadcast spreading seed now for like rye grasses and so forth you want to put in on your rye grass a summer and winter blend and that is usually best done with the drill get it into the soil so forth that's further going to help you break up your soil let's go down these things one at a time now what i like to do is on the perimeter around your perimeter fencing of your pastures put a little white clover out there you know just broadcast you know i usually make it about my last pass and broadcast spread in some white clover what you're looking for there is one it's going to draw insects from the ditches and and, and uh, woods and things of this nature, your tree lines, draw them into your fields, your pollinators, things of this nature, which is going to help with the organic material build up on your on your ground. Bugs are a good thing, certain bugs, okay. And for the most part, if you start getting some nasty critters in there, you may have to deal with that. But nine times out of ten, you can do it with a plant that drives them out. But I always like to do on the perimeters uh, at least one pass with the spreader uh, of white clover. Once you've gotten your ryegrass drilled in, then I like to go ahead and you can usually even mix this in together. Um, of go ahead and put some tall fescue, something like that, in with your ryegrass mixes. That way you've got a mix of ryegrasses and tall fescue planted together. So once you get those down, here is some of my favorites, and you'll find that if you use this particular mix, it, it does real good on, on putting weight on cattle. Uh, hairy vetch. Yeah, doesn't look like much, but it it is really, it's, it's a good weight putter on her for cattle, okay, and they love it. So they're going to be hitting it pretty hard. Move out of that. I like to also put into the centers of my pastures around the rest of the pasture. I sow a lot of red clover. It is good for getting nitrogen back into your soil. It's a good nitrogen fixture for your soil. The cattle like it, okay? Pollinators like it. You do want pollinators. It's going to help uh, spread things around. Now, you got folks who have two different ways of doing this. Some like to go with annual grasses. I particularly don't. 
I would rather, rather go with the perennial grass. You know, if you start off with a good mix, you're not going to have to really change that out much. It's going to be your other plantings that you, you're going to do okay with. So we've got the white clover at the perimeters. We've got the hairy vetch. We've got the rye, a uh, cool weather rye, and a warm weather rye in there, and your red clover. What you're going to want to do is get that soil aerated. The deeper, the better. Okay, and there's no better plant for that. And by the way, cattle and deer, if you're into deer hunting, love this stuff. It's called daikon radishes. As you can see, it's a long tubular radish, but it has got a tap root that'll go down four, five, six foot. They've even seen them go down deeper than that. Very long tap root. The benefit of the daikons is the first hard freeze you get, that turns into nothing but a pile of mush, leaving all that nitrogen and other minerals right at the surface of your ground. It's like a self-fertilization program for your pasture. Daikon radishes, and by the way, if you ever happen to go out there and find a few good ones, you can gather them up there, pretty good salads and things of this nature too. So you can even chow down on them. A lot of fancy restaurants really like them. So you get your daikon radishes in there. Another thing that's good for humans, uh, talk about being prepped, uh, plantain. Most people look at it as a weed. Okay, you probably see it in your yard. You probably pull it up. Okay, number one, it is edible. It has a lot of medicinal purposes. Helps uh, with infections. It works on wounds as far as keeping uh, the infection down on a wound. A lot of different, you know, great on digestive tract, things of this nature. It is a good all-around plant. I'm not going to go into the deep particulars on it, but the one thing I can tell you is for rumen animals, it is a great dewormer. And you'll find the cattle don't really aren't too crazy about it, but if they start developing a worm load, suddenly they get a craving for that plantain. So you want to have some out there. I wouldn't say go real heavy with it. You'd want to be plantain scattered around. On. Now, I wouldn't do that every year unless you're totally turning this thing under every year, which I do not recommend. It will spread on its own. <laughs> it is a weed. It'll, it'll, it'll spread. So you've got your tall fescue, you got your rise. Here's one that I really love, especially if you've got a roadway nearby. Sun hemp. That is uh, a good way to, to apply the pounds to your cattle quickly. They really like it. It is a good, solid, stable plant, and it'll get tall, man. I mean, it will get tall. In the fall, when you you know you need to take that down, you can go out there and bush hog that stuff. It makes great ground cover, <laughs> truly great ground cover. So it's got a lot of perks to it. And like I said, you'll get a few <laughs> a few cops even slow down going past your field. <laughs> this dude growing out there because it does in its original stage <laughs> looks a little like a, a like a pot plant growing out there. But like I said, the cattle like it. It puts on uh, they put on good weight from it good plant to have in your pasture. And in oats. Yeah. You'll probably not see an oat head ever form on it because cattle really like the oat plant and they will eat the heck out of it. Here again, it's good for them, a lot of protein, puts on weight good. That is a good basic pasture mix. Now, is it pretty and nice and perfectly green and, and oh, it's not. It's got all kinds of stuff in there. And when I say basic, what you want to do is get with your seed companies and start talking to them a little. You know, find out what, you know, if you're looking to add protein, if you're looking to repair your soil. Uh, daikon radishes I really like for repairing soil. Because what happens is when that stuff dies, number one, it leaves a nitrogen-rich area where it was at. And whatever you plant back in that is going to have a head start for making deep roots. And that's your goal with a uh, pasture, folks, is you want loose soil to where you can get very deep roots. Not only is that going to keep your cattle looking good and healthy, it is going to help drought resistance in your soil. They had done some research out there where they took turnips, simple turnip plants, and they planted that into a regenerative pasture and planted some turnips in there. And then right off of the field, they did the standard planting for turnips. That particular year, they had a dry season. When they went out and was checking the field, the turnip that was planted conventionally out there, no nice clean dirt and everything should have just been perfect for them to grow, but they had a light, light amount of moisture. They're just burned up, shot, gone. But yet where they had planted over to that regenerative, where you had that diversity of plants around it, turnips were beautiful. 
just beautiful. It's that mix of plants that pulls your your microbiology into your fields. It pulls in, you got a lot of mycorrhizal fungi, which shares those minerals around and so forth with different plants. You build a network. That regenerative network is what makes your soil work. Once you get started in this path, you don't want to do much disking. You don't want to disturb the soil any more than you absolutely have to to get that seed into the into the dirt. Usually when you start in with this, a lot of times you're just using the cultipacker and roll the stuff down and go ahead and just seed into that. It traps the seed down underneath that organic matter that's on the surface and holds the seed in place for it to take, start taking root. Because you've had the daikon radishes in there, you've got deep root holes and these plants will utilize that. They will get their root structure down deep in the soil, which is gonna, like I said, protect you from, from droughts and dry seasons, but it's also gonna allow that root structure to get down into those minerals which is going to give you a healthier, more vibrant plant, which is going to make your cats, your cows get fat quick. That's the trick. Feed them a salad. You got to give them a mix and change it up. You know, you don't want to eat the same things all the time. Neither does your cows. Every season, try to put something new in. You want to turn that into, if you go out and walk a native, a true native pasture, you're going to find 30 different species of plants growing there. You may find that some of your sun hemp doesn't do good in sections of your plant, of your pasture. Some other sections it does great. Keep that in mind. Map that stuff out. Get you some soil analysis done on your uh, soil in that area. I always like to get soil analysis done before starting. Because you can change this up a little bit if you're needing to bring different minerals uh, into the soil. Things like, you know, do you need more nitrogen? If so, you might want to go a little heavy on the red clovers. Things of this nature. You can feed your cows well, and the guy over there that has the nice pretty grass pasture, and he's going to be poking fun at you. Clean to the time that he sees calves that fell out of his cows to your cows at the same time, and you're walking around with 600 pounders out there, and his calves look like they've just been weaned. That's the difference. Putting the weight on the cattle quickly. That's what you're here to do. The faster you can get your product ready for market, the better off you are. Pastures hold up better in droughts. Just all sorts of perks to it. You want to mix, you know, low, medium, high standing plants that protect each other from the elements. You know, you get a good stand of the sun hemp out there in the wintertime, it can protect your, your other plants from, you know, the heavy snows. You'll see cattle out there taking their nose and shoveling through the snow and find still down underneath there green grass. Seen it plenty of times. Just give them a mix. Go back to nature. Regenerative pastures work. So that's a good mix to start with. Won't let this go much longer and I hope you're having a great week but give that a whirl. I think you'll you'll find out it's going to work very well for you. Good. That's a good mix to start off. You might also talk to your seed company in the area. They may have some suggestions to add to that or say, hey, that's not going to grow well here. Try this. This is Rich Jesse Homestead. Hope you're having a great week, and we'll talk to you real soon.